where can we put our trust at the moment? That's a massive question, is it? Isn't it? It's who can we trust? Search who can we trust on Google, and it's a question that is being asked all over the place. Who can we trust when it comes to the coronavirus? Can we trust the science? Can we trust the government? Can we trust one another? The rhetoric is to be suspicious, to spy on one another and report one another. Who can we trust? Fake news, conspiracy theories, convincing people claiming to proclaim the truth. How can we find a trustworthy place of refuge? When, for many of us, when we've been let down in relationships, we find it really very difficult to trust. It's a bit like a sickness, a sickness of suspicion and mistrust, inflamed by the media and people who post convincingly on Facebook groups and on Twitter and on WhatsApp. It means that we're more likely to lash out, to walk away from the good things, the trustworthy things, to put up barriers and to push people away. It adds to the uncertainty that surrounds us and makes us more cautious about how we approach life. We can only learn to trust if we have confidence in something. As we come to our covenant service today, in a world that finds it difficult to trust, we choose to trust. As we trust in the unconditional grace of God, as God makes a covenant with us, we are called to embrace that covenant as we make a covenant with him, trusting in his ways and giving our lives to him again. We're also called as Baptists to make a covenant with the community of Christ. We're not only called to Christ, we are called together to Christ. As we face uncertainty and crisis together, we commit to walk with each other and watch over one another as the early Baptists did. It's a call to trust in God and trust in the community he has called us to. This level of trust is countercultural. But then so is the gift of grace, the forgiveness and certainty and love we see in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, who as Christians we choose to follow. As we live through what might be one of the hardest periods in most of our lives, we need to be able to find our safe places, our trust, our refuge. As we covenant together, we make a commitment to find that safe place, walking with others with the same mind in the same direction. But what does that place of refuge look like? and how safe is it? Over the past year, we've turned a lot to scripture, um, to those scriptures of reassurance, scriptures that remind us that God is here, that God is looking after us, and that God is good. They comfort us, they bring us joy, they bring us peace, they remind us of what safety is. And one of those places where many of us have found safety is Psalm 91. Now, Psalm 91 is a psalm that speaks of that thing that we find it difficult to find sometimes, trust. And it reminds us of what it means to find our refuge in God. As we walk into 2021, this psalm will keep us going, will help us to hold on and will sustain us. We've chosen it as our psalm of the year as a church and exploring it today is only the beginning. We will continue to reflect on it, to dwell in it and to find safety in it as the year goes on. Psalm 91 is a psalm of reassurance after Psalm 90's cry out to God to find a place of safety. It reminds us that where everything else is broken apart, trusting in God is the only dependable. In the difficulties of exile, in our difficulties right now, we can be completely reassured by God's presence. Here's our place of refuge in the midst of trouble. Our verse of the year is verse two, which sums this up beautifully in one sentence. The whole of the psalm is said in this sentence. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. But what does this safe place of refuge look like? 
While the psalmist presents to us a number of threats the Israelites would relate to, the foul and snare, the deadly pestilence, the terror of the night, the arrows of the day, the plague that destroys, the stone that makes you stumble, the wild animals that could overpower, and presents the alternative that God offers. And in there, there are two basic kinds of threats. The threat from our physical enemies, the foul and snare and arrows, and the threat from unseen and unexpected enemies, the pestilence and the plague. We might know the second in particular right now, but there are also the human created enemies of misused power, injustice, poverty, misgovernment that threaten us now too and threaten our ability to stand against the threat of plague and pestilence. The language of a thousand and ten thousand, the many things that we fear, might feel all too real at the moment. And that is why finding a place of trust, a place of shelter, a place of refuge is so important for our well-being. The psalmist reminds us that God offers just that. He is our shelter. He is our shadow. He's our shade, our refuge that protects us from danger, our fortress for providing protection in the city. He shelters us under his wings like a mother bird protects her offspring. He's a shield that holds up against anything thrown at us. Our rampart, that outer wall that protects the inner keep of the castle. He is our defence mechanism against what is thrown at us. He helps us to not be overwhelmed. There is intimacy about all of this. Our transcendent God gently keeps us safe under his wings. Such divine care is not limited by time or by space. Today, our refuge for many of us will start in the home that we live in, where we are surrounded by comfortable things, where it is only our own dirt and our own germs that threaten us. That's the message of our government right now. Go home, shut the door, stay safe. Stay safe. But for some of us, that is not an option. We don't have a safe place, throwing more what is behind the door than what is beyond the door. Behind our front doors are the unspoken things, the fear from the actions of those we live with, or the fear of isolation and the depression and anxiety that brings. A refuge for some of us will not be found at home, and as we covenant together to walk and watch over one another, we create a community of trust where for those for whom refuge is not easy to find, refuge, a safe space can be found. God brought us together and God calls us to be his shelter. When we call on God, when we look to God for refuge, we recognise that safety can only truly be found in him because he is the one who we can trust completely with everything. As we recommit ourselves to God, we recommit our trust to him, placing our life into his hands. As we recommit ourselves to God, we recommit ourselves to become people of his trust. And so we commit ourselves once again to helping others to find safety amongst all that is going on. Right now, that is creating safe space online, on the phone, where security can be found. It's showing people a way out if they are not safe at home. Right now, that's helping people to see the hope that Christ offers. Right now, that's pointing people to the refuge and security and hope found in God. This is who we are called to be. God is worthy of the community's trust. He's worthy of our trust. And as we seek to serve him, the hope is that we become a community of trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There is, though, a bit of a warning as we read this psalm. We might read it, and many people have done this throughout history, and imagine that when we're getting things right with God, everything will be okay. Nothing will come near us. But that doesn't embrace the reality of life. It doesn't fit with the nature of God's work in the world. We remember that we live in a fallen and broken world where these things that the psalmist describes will happen. 
Trust is based on the reality of Christian hope, not false hope, not manipulative hope, not fake hope. We can see that in the story of Jesus in the wilderness in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Satan placed Jesus on the pinnacle of the temple and challenged him to test God's promises that the angels will look after him, like in this psalm. But Jesus said no, because real trust does not seek to test God or prove his faithfulness. Real trust seeks to rely on God in all things, whilst living as best and as safely as we can. We can trust God to be there through this. We can trust God to give us comfort as we shelter under his wings. We can trust God to take this all away. Maybe not right now, but in the future, that is trust. Where things are not all right now, in the future, they will certainly surely be better when we take refuge in that. The safe place we find in God is in the promises he gives to us. The security we find in knowing that this now, right now is not it. The hope that we find in knowing that there is better to come. The refuge we find in his beautiful world and present, work, beautiful word and presence. That's what our safe place in God looks like. It's far beyond the right now. It's an eternal promise. And as we recommit ourselves to him today, we make a commitment to hold on to that, knowing that Jesus, by dying on the cross, has set us free from everything that can harm us. So as we continue to walk into 2021, in all its uncertainty, let us turn to our place of eternal trust, our God, and see where he's calling us individually and together. As we look up, let us place all we are and have into his hands. And as we look out, let us commit once again to walking together and watching over one another. Let us commit once again to being a church that is called to be a place of safety and refuge for our wider community. For it is to him we are called. In him we find safety and refuge. And together with his church community, we offer refuge to each other and beyond. It is him who calls us to work with him and to walk with him one day at a time. He will rescue us from this. He will protect us. He will answer our prayers. He will be with us through this. We will be delivered from this and we will be honoured by him. He will give us a long life eternal life. He will save us. This is what a place of trust looks like, where we can be sure that all of these things are true. Because they love me, says the Lord, I will rescue them. I will protect them they acknowledge my name. They will call on me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honour them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen.